Welcome to our Heart for Women podcast. I'm your host, Pastor Delphine Jordan. Today, our topic is Living Unto God, Part 2. And we are coming from the Book of Romans. And we're going to start at the 12th chapter again. And we're going to discuss that chapter when Paul was making an appeal to the church. But before I get started, I would like for each panelist to introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Minister LaDonna. Hello to all my sisters in Christ out there. I look forward to breaking bread with the panelists, these powerful women of God, and you today. Good day, all. I'm Minister Jay Carter, and I count it a joy to share. God's truth with these dynamic panel of women on today. I'm Minister Kim Winborn, and I'm excited to share in the Word of God with such an awesome, mighty women of God. Hello, I am Minister Karen Long, and I'm looking forward to all of what God is going to share. Let's get right into the Word. The 12th chapter of the book of Romans, starting at the first verse, Paul began to make an appeal to the church. And he was saying, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service and not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what that is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. And here Apostle Paul was making that appeal as we was discussing on our last podcast. And God is calling us as a church to walk in the beauty of the holiness of him. And he was saying, by the mercies of God. And you know what was so unique when I began to read the book of Romans, I was looking at the first chapter. And what really amazed me in that first chapter of the book of Romans, starting at the uh, eighth verse, it said this. He says, first, I thank God, my God, through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken throughout the whole world. Here, this church had such faith that it was spoken out through the world. But you know, before I get started, I want to go to Minister Jay, because on our last podcast, she needed to come back to talk about when Paul was saying, be not conformed to this world, but he was telling us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And as a gift to us, a teacher, she's going to begin to expound what Paul was saying in that 12th chapter. Pastor Delphine, it's just such a blessing to hear that the individual's faith was spoken about throughout all of the Christendom. And it's such a blessing to be with you guys today. And I really believe that Romans 12, 1 through 2, bears repeating. And so I looked it up in the Amplified Version because as a teacher, I love breaking down the word so that we have an understanding of what the Holy Spirit is saying. And it says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational or logical or intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. And so we see that Paul is instructing believers in Romans 12, one through two. One through two. He is telling us to live radically different than the way most people live. And he's exhorting us to consecrate ourselves, to set ourselves apart. And he's also telling us that we consecrate our bodies and that we allow a transformation to come through by the renewal of our minds. And as I was saying earlier, 
when he begins, he says, I beseech you, brethren. But before that, he says, therefore. And therefore, it means consequently, or these things being so. Well, what do the things mean so before he even begins to encourage people? Let me highlight some of those. In Romans chapter 7, verse 19, he talks about this warring in our members. He said, those things which I want to do, I do not. And those things which I do, I do not, because I find there's a warring in my members. He says, I do not do the good I want to do. But the evil I do not want to do, that thing I do. And then in Romans 8, 1 to 12, Romans 8, 1 to 2, Paul exhorts, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the laws of sin and death. And then in Romans 10, 9 and 10, he teaches what we need to be saved. So clearly he says, therefore, these are the things that I've exhorted you to do. And now this is what I'm telling you to do as a result of all that God has given to us. He teaches, he says, I beseech you, I urge you, I entreat you by the mercies, the compassion of God that you present, that you yield yourselves, your bodies alive. And that alive means an ongoing sacrifice given again and again and again over a lifetime. It's not just a one-time thing, but it's a sacrifice, amen? He says, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A sacrifice is an offering to be without blemish, without defect, the best of quality. And so often when we're giving ourselves to God, we're giving him our dregs, we're giving him our leftovers, we're not giving him our best, but we are to give a sacrifice, amen? And he says, this is your reasonable or your acceptable service. And let's just look at Romans 12 and two. Paul is admonishing us. Now, first of all, we consecrate our bodies. And then he says, how do you do that? By renewing your mind. And it goes on to say, be not conformed. The Greek word is schematic or a scheme. The fashion of life or to conform to another's Pattern. So we don't want to conform ourselves to the image of this world, but to be transformed. So we see the confirmation to not be conformed to the image of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Renewing means a complete change for the better. And that mind is to have our faculties refreshed, renewed. He says that you may prove or to test or to examine what the will of God is. So we know what God's will is, is to live a life consecrated before him, is to renew our minds to the word of God so that we are desirous of doing the will of God. I love Romans 12, one through two, because we have got to set ourselves in motion to do the will of the father, amen? Amen, Minister Jay. I would like for you to elaborate a little bit more about being conformed. Um, what was Paul saying? What is what is when he said, be not conformed to this world? So what what is the world? What was he saying? You know, because really Christians, there are really a lot of Christians don't even know that they're walking like the world. So what was Paul saying? What's in the world that he tells us not to be conformed to this world? Amen, Pastor Dell. I'm so glad you asked relative to what does it mean to be conformed? Conformed means to be fashioned alike, to be conformed to another's pattern. And we know what the pattern of the world is like, right? It says we have the lust of the world and the pride of life. And those are the things that we should not be conformed to. And when you're conformed, it's like taking the mold or the shape of another thing. So I love when you would say association brings on assimilation. When you're constantly associating and being conformed to what you see in the world, what you see people doing in the world, you tend to take on their attributes people lying, people cheating, people stealing, people telling untruths, people being unfair instead of walking in the love and the spirit.
spirit, particularly the fruit of the spirit of God. So that's what it is to be conformed to another pattern as opposed to being transformed. Transform, that word is metamorphoso or metamorphosis, like into a butterfly, right? There's a transformation that comes not from exterior, but it comes from interior. And that transformation comes from the spirit-filled word of God. That's the only thing that can bring about a change. God says, my word will not return to me void, but it will prosper in what it is sent forth to do. So God is calling us to consecrate ourselves. Don't be conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed from the interior to the exterior. Praise God. Minister Jay, you are so right uh, about we should not have lust of the eye and lust of the flesh and the pride of life. That scripture is in 1 John, the second chapter at the 15th verse. And Apostle John began to tell them, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And it talks about the world passing away. And I really like where you broke that down about um, not being conformed to this world. And there's so many things out there that can really entrap Christians um, into the things of the world. The world have its own art. The world have its own music. The world have its own even religion. They say, long as I go to church and say a little grace, say a little prayer, and then I go back out and live my sinful ways. And that's why Paul tells us that we have to renew our mind. And then like you were saying, Minister Jay, our thought patterns, we cannot think like the world. We have to renew our mind. And the way we renew our mind, like you were saying, we have to get into scriptures. And then it, it, it talks about even our lifestyle. I know when I was a sinner, I dressed like a sinner. But when Jesus came on the inside of my heart, he cleaned me up on the inside, like you said, eternal. And the reason why Paul was given this standard about beseeching them, uh, making appeal to them to present their bodies because he said, your body is holy and you got to present that. And see, we serve God with our heart. And even Paul said that in the first chapter, he said this, he says, I serve God with my, with, with the spirit. Um, I want to read that scripture. I want to read that. That is in Romans 1. Paul was, was elaborating on about how he served God with the spirit. He says, um, in the ninth verse, he says, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, I, I, I serve God. And he says, I, I even you know, pray for you without ceasing. And, and those that are listening to us today, we as women of God on this panel, we pray for you daily. We pray that God will bless you, that he will give you a word of due season to transform your life, to become more in the image of Jesus. Because we are in a time that we are supposed to shine as bright lights, not on just on the inside, but that light on the inside should be shining on the outside side. And I believe that we can look nice. Our apparel can look nice, but it should be a cleanness about us. But the world should see us different than with the way they dress. And I just think that so many people are falling into traps. And that's why Paul says we cannot be conformed to this world, but we have to renew this mind because there are people that are in this situation that Paul, he was telling us that God wants to bring them out. He gives that, he gives us answers in the first chapter um, saying that we once was like that. We once had those things in us, but God has delivered us from the guilt and the filth of the world that used to be in us, but he has sanctified us. And we as women of God, we have to present our bodies, like you said, Minister Jay, every day as a living sacrifice. Paul 
to tell us in the book of Romans. He tells us that. He tells us how to, to live a godly life. He tells us how to use our gift for the service of God. And see, I know my gift is a gift of exhortation and it has the ability to encourage, to comfort and to, to build up and to even admonish when God's spirit moves upon me. And then he tells us how to live a godly life, how to treat those that are in the body of Christ. And then he tells us how to treat those that are outside the church when they are enemies and, and they want to do us in. But he gives us a standard, a way of living. And now before I go any further, I would like for Minister Kim to begin to elaborate on Romans 12. Thank you, Pastor Dale. Romans 12 and 1, what really stands out the most to me is when Paul says to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And we heard it said over and over, but what sacrifice means to me, it actually means to destroy something. In other words, to surrender myself, my whole heart to God, to destroy the nature of this sin that's in my members. The one thing God says to be holy, 1 Peter 1 and 15, as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. God is calling us to holiness and that's a word that we don't hear too often in the church today, but it's still right. It is the only way and that is to be holy and living up to God means to walk in wisdom. Proverbs 4 and 7 tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get understanding, get wisdom. But in all you're getting, get understanding. In other words, you must know how to apply the word of God in order to live unto God, to walk in wisdom. Romans 13 and 13 says, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Colossians 4, 5 through 6 says to walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. And did not Jesus tell us in Matthew 5 that we are the salt of the earth? But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? If we lose our holiness, if we lose walking upright before God in the sinful nature, how can we season the world? Then we are good for nothing. And me, I want to hear my father say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I do not I want to hear him say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I knew you not. I desire to be holy and walk upright before God. I want to be that living sacrifice. I want to sell out all to Jesus, even as a young Christian. The one thing I said when I first got born again in the early 20s, I said, Lord, I want to be the best example of Jesus that I could possibly be. I had seen so many hypocrites in my family. They went to church. They sang on the choir. They were on the usher board. And then they get off from church and go to drinking. And I knew as a young girl, that should not be. So when Jesus came into my heart, I said, Lord, let me be the best example of you, of your holiness, of your righteousness. And I want to turn to Ephesians 5. This is Bishop's, one of Bishop's favorite scriptures, starting at verse 15, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord? Well, the scripture tells us to not be drunk with wine, 
but be filled with the spirit. And even as Minister Jay was speaking in Romans 8 and 1, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But so many people want to run with that scripture and they want to say, you can't judge me, I'm not condemned. But the scripture says, for those who are walking according to the spirit, so we have to examine ourselves and make sure we are walking according to the spirit of God and not fulfilling the lust of our flesh. Amen. Amen, Minister Kim. That was so well spoken. I want to go to my daughter, LaDonna, begin to elaborate on Romans 12. I said it's just so awesome to see, you know, sitting here and to hear, you know, the anointing and to see it in operation and just how each panelist is on one accord uh, without even studying together or talking to each other prior to the podcast as to what they're bringing out of the scripture that we started in part one. So when I started reading and meditating on the scripture again in uh, Romans 12, I, I thought about when it said, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present. And it took me back to a scripture that I had mentioned um, in the previous podcast in Ephesians 5 and 2, where it says, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God, for sweet smelling aroma. So when we present, we're presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice, as a gift. We're giving ourselves daily to God. And, you know, I, I said, God, how, you know, how do we do that, you know, every day? Because the scripture says, even our righteousness is as filthy rags, but he said, holy and acceptable. And he's given us his son, Jesus Christ. And, and it made me think about us as believers that we have to contend with, Minister Jay touched on it. Uh, we have to contend with the carnality, which is our flesh that we know, if you want to read about the specifics in Galatians 5 and 19, you know, as believers, we also have to deal with the enemy, warfare, with principalities. Um, we also have to deal with the corrupt world. And if you read down on the scripture, it says, do not be conformed to this world. And I went to the exact same place that Pastor Dale, Minister Jay brought up, renewing your mind. Our mind is powerful. But God and his spirit on the inside of us is more powerful. So every scripture that I had has been spoken tonight. <laughs> Mom, you brought up Philippians 4 and 8. I said, God, how do I, I'm thinking of myself, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Lord, how do I present myself as a living sacrifice dealing with the carnality of my flesh, <laughs> dealing with this corrupt evil world that's deteriorating, and then dealing with principalities that's coming for me. So it made me think of, of the mind and, and how um, Minister Jay mentioned Romans 7, 19, how our members are, are warring against each other. And um, so I thought of the scripture in Matthews 12 and 34. And it says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then if you go to Proverbs 23, 7, and it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So I said, God, how can we renew our minds? And I went straight to Philippians 4 and 8. And, and mom had mentioned it, but I'm going to read it. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, sound teaching, listening to this podcast, listening on Sunday, fellowshipping with those that are in Christ, truth, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. When we wake up in the morning, find a scripture that you can focus on to meditate, to help this mind be strong. That's why God says, 
put on the mind of Christ. That is the only way that we can present ourselves wholly about someone that you love, your spouse, your child, a friend that you've known over 30 years. When you're giving them a gift, you go to the extent to prepare that gift, but you also have spent time with them. You know them. So you know what that sweet smell and aroma would be before them. So that's how the father wants us to be. He wants us to know him in spirit and in truth. He wants us to meditate on his word, that we would know his voice, that we would understand who he is. That's how we present ourselves living because you're living every day, a daily sacrifice sacrifice. It's just that simple. It's just waking up in the morning and giving your day. God says, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all that means is just seeking those things as that scripture says in Philippians 4 and 8, true, noble, pure, not meditating on what someone did to you the day before and waking up that morning thinking of how, I'm, how am I going to get them back? God says, heap coals of fire of kindness on them. Meditate on those scriptures and Proverbs. They tell you how to, how to combat this flesh because we need the power and the anointing of the word to help us keep this flesh under subjection to be that living sacrifice. So I was just so blessed because Minister Jay was talking about the mind and my mom was talking about those things to meditate on. And Minister Wimborn was talking about how you have that desire like you did in the beginning in the first when you gave your life to Christ that you wanna look, you when you like when you go on that first date, you want your clothes to be right. You want your hair to be, God says, keep that, keep that, that passion, keep that, that love, keep that fight. You got to fight the good fight of faith. And it just blessed me today to hear, hear my sisters talk on this subject because I know me, I, I, I need help. I need to hear the word because as I hear the word, it causes me to want to do the word and to please God. And it gives me power. It gives me strength. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word is so powerful. Meditate that God would begin to work in your mind, that you would begin to think as he thinks, that you would begin to see as he sees, that you would begin to speak as he, that abundance that comes out would just be, because you want to be that gift unto God, that beautiful smelling aroma gift on a sacrificial level every day. And it is attainable. But it's, it's, it's work. It is so much work. And that's why the scripture is saying, I beseech you, brethren, mercy, God, mercy, Father, mercy, Father, by the mercies, by the mercies of God, by the purging of his blood of his son, Jesus Christ. That's the only way. It's nothing that we can work up ourselves but we have to know how to lean that to our own understanding, but trust God in all of your ways. Glory be to God, to each one of you. Just awesome the way you're ministering the word of God. And, uh, you know, I like what you were saying, LaDonna, about that we have to have that intimate relationship. We have to present our bodies. And even Paul says that in the 12th chapter, um, at the, let me see, the 12th verse, he says, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continue steadfastly in prayer. And where you develop a relationship with the Lord Jesus is prayers, communicating, it's talking to him and he's talking back to you. And the only way you're going to know his voice is through the word of God. And you know, we all going to have trials in this life. And there are things that our minds sometimes just cannot handle. Our bodies going through trials trauma cannot handle. If we have built up our spiritual man on the inside, which is our heart, where the word 
word is housed and is strengthened that no matter if my mind want to snap, it will come right back in line because of what the word of God says. And I always preach this. I always teach this to the young that get in a place with God. David gave us that revelation in the book of Psalms, Psalm 91, when he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he should deliver you from the snares of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler for you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, for it shall not come near you, but with your eyes, you shall look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord, even the most high, your dwelling place. For no plague shall come near your dwelling, for he he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest you dash your foot against a stone. For you shall tread upon lions and cobras and young lions and serpents. You shall trample under your feet because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, he will deliver me. He will set you on high because you have known his name. For you shall call upon him and he will be with you in times of trouble. He will deliver you. He will honor you and deliver you and with long life he will satisfy you and that's a song that should be in your heart. That is revelation that God give us through the word but you know like I said the preacher is stirred but Minister Kern we want you to begin to elaborate in what the Lord has given you by the power of the Holy Spirit. One of the things that stood out from the Romans 12 chapter um, chapter 12 verse 1 passage was everyone spoke so eloquently on the living sacrifice and presenting our bodies but what stands out for me as we continue this study was the word the reasonable service it is my reasonable worship that when I present myself to him that I am worshiping him it is how I reverence God in my life. It is how I show up every single day with the words that I say, with the people that I interact with, the things that I choose to do, the places that I choose to go to, all of that as a Christian should reflect my worship and my reverence for God. And if it doesn't, then there needs to be some self-examination. And we can do that too. As believers, we ought to examine ourselves to see if we are still in the faith, to see if we are still being faithful to what we heard, what we learned, what we understood according to his word and what we're supposed to be representing every single day. I wanna share with you a scripture because all of you went into Pretty much, pretty much most of you went into Philippians chapter four. I want to go there too, because there was something when Minister LaDonna was ministering that stood out to me. And I think as we are exercising our faith in God, it is truly work. Living unto God is work. So don't, don't be deceived that you think you can just fly by the seat of your pants, wake up and be holy and honorable unto God. You have to exercise your faith, just like your natural body. If you don't exercise, those muscles begin to die. Those fat cells begin to grow. Same thing happens in the spiritual realm. If you do not exercise your faith by first praying unto God, asking God to forgive you of your sins, acknowledging that you need him in your life, and then honoring him by reading his word and knowing who he is and how he's to direct your path every day. If you don't do those things, you are not exercising your spirit man and your spirit man will get lazy. It'll get slowful. It may die because it's unhealthy. And so you have a responsibility as a woman of God, as a child of God to exercise your faith 
every single day. But I want you to read this and understand this. Philippians chapter four, and we're gonna start at verse 11. And I'm gonna have to put the glasses on. And I'm gonna start at verse 11 and the second part of it, where it starts at, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be a base and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you can live unto God because you have learned how to be content in whatever state you're in. You're in. That is because you are reverencing God. You are worshiping him. You are presenting yourself to him so you can be faithful, you can be holy, you can be transformed because I know some of my sisters talked about that transformation that needs to be, um, that needs to take place in your life, that we're no longer conformed to this world. We don't do things the way the world does them. We don't see things the way the world sees them. Our eyes and our lens is that of God's. We see it the way he sees it. We hear it the way he wrote it in his word. And that's how we live it. And sometimes, probably most times, it will kick against what is normal. It'll kick against what is natural to others, but we're supernatural. We're not like others. We've been redeemed. We've been bought. We've been purchased and we owe God everything. And so we have to live our lives unto him because he gave his life for us. And it was a sacrifice for him. It's going to be a sacrifice for, her, for us. And it's only fair. It's only right. And we can do it because we can do all things through Christ. God bless you. The word is just so good. Thank you, Minister Kern, for that word. We can continue this podcast. We will see you next time. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we appreciate your continued support. If you would like to make a donation, please go to tbwc.org slash give.